Hey, I meant I was rich because I have friends like George Bailey. George Bailey, I would swim a paladin stream. This may come as a shock to some of you, but a good amount of the influencers that you see are not as wealthy as you think they are. They are probably living out of a cardboard box and eating lukewarm soup or drinking soup. Do you eat or drink soup? I've been practicing. There's a common misconception about social media that people have adopted for some reason, and I'm here to shut down those rumors. Followers do not equate to the amount of money that somebody makes. <gasps> I know, I'm sorry. It's such an easy thing to just assume, but unfortunately that's not always the case. Like if someone has 1 million followers on a platform, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're making a lot of money or any money, really. Some of the people who watch me <laughs> genuinely believe that I'm big ballin' on here because of my subscriber count, and they honestly genuinely think that I could buy one of the pyramids in Egypt. First of all, why on earth would I wanna own King Tut's tomb? I mean, what am I supposed to do with him? Play dress up? Do a puppet show? Ugh, gross. Dead bodies give me the heebie-jeebies. And second of all, guys, I'm just an ordinary girl. I'm a lucky girl whose dreams came true, but underneath it all, I'm just like you. No, but seriously, influencers have been going through it lately in the finance department. There's certainly a lot of broke influencers out there. There's a certain type of influencer that is most likely to be broke, and it's usually the ones who are overcompensating. Sorry, by flexing their material goods. Remember the hype beast era of YouTube with rice gum and others? Listen, I'm not saying that creators like rice gum were one bad financial decision away from having to be roommates with Frankie Watterson. Anyway, you guys hungry? Sure. sure. Me too. I thought there'd be some food coming after that question. But I don't fully believe that he owns 100% of everything that he was flexing on his channel, like the cars, the rollies, with the dab of ranch, I guess. And then, you know, he had a designer about to hold up his pants. I don't think he owned those. I'll believe that he owns some of them, but all of it, I don't know. But I could be wrong. For a lot of influencers, keeping up with appearances is more important than actually having stable income. And sometimes they will do their flexing at the expense of other people. Honestly, let's talk about it. There was this girl on Instagram. I thought she was rich rich. Girl was on back-to-back -back trips. Human hair, nails done, everything. She attended every event I ever wanted to go to. She was out with celebrities. Let's not even get started on the outfits, the handbags, everything. And it wasn't until I made friends with her friends. And honey, they weren't her friends. When I tell you the tea was hot, the shorty couldn't even afford gas. Gas, bro. They were literally complaining about her asking them for 20 bucks because she was stranded. So Shorty was just on a trip to Jamaica. I think the worst part for me was when they told me she only had like $3 in her bank account. But honestly, this was the reality check I needed. After that bubble burst for me, I really realized I was actually doing well in life. Now, every time she posts, I'm just like, <laughs> because she'll really spend her last dollar on getting her Instagram posts and hair and like background, but she can't even afford to eat. Could it be me? A lot of influencers have this bad habit of living above their means because of the amount of money that they do initially earn when they actually like start building their platform. I'm not saying that all influencers have been broke this whole time. That's ridiculous. Surely some of them have been rich and probably were rich before they even had like a following. But regardless, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that some just suck at evolving the tactics that made them money in the first place. Look at Mr. Beast, for example. That man is like quite literally just the, the king of monetizing the crap out of every single thing that he does. It's insane. He has a Zaxby's meal now. Zaxby's! He has infiltrated my, one of my favorite spots. I pulled up to that joint and they were like, hey, would you like to try the Beast box or whatever? And I was like, what? Get out of my face with that. But also let me know if the Mr. Beast meal is good. I'm not eating it, I'm not trying it because I am the type of person who walks into like a, 
a fast food place or an establishment or whatever and has like their one order and I don't stray from that one order. I am loyal to that order. I'm not that curious. Let me know if the Mr. Beast <laughs> meal is good. Anyway, I'm sorry. Back to what I was saying. Weird tangent. Social media can be a business. Why do you think I launched memberships on my channel? All right, we have to expand the empire while I have you guys under my spell. Ooh, you want to be a member of my channel so badly. Ooh, you want extra content from me. Ooh, it's only $2.99 a month. Ooh, buy it if you can. If not, it's really no big deal because I'm going to upload some of the videos on my second channel anyway. Ooh. When influencers realize that their content is eligible to be monetized, a concerning number of them do not use that to their advantage. Now, I'm not saying that people with followers should automatically resort to being a sellout or like start a business or whatever, start monetizing the crap out of everything they do all the time. Like some people genuinely, they do social media for funsies and they have little to no desire to make it a job. I'm not saying that just because you can, you should. I'm just saying that if you do decide to start monetizing your content, you have to be smart about it. You really, really do, especially in this economy because nobody wants to pay for anything. I'm pretty sure about 99% of you are not going to join my memberships and that's fine. I started my memberships knowing damn well that 99.9% .9 of you don't care. <laughs> and that's okay. I think that with influencers and like monetizing their content or just like random people who kind of just like get a platform out of nowhere, especially like on TikTok, I think that when it's just an average person who got famous for some reason. I think that this like lack of business savviness is just, it's not stemmed from laziness or lack of hustle, though it can be, but it really is just point blank lack of knowledge. Because it's one thing to be on social media and like intentionally grind to make a business, but then it's a whole other thing where you're just kind of messing around and then suddenly you have a platform and it's like you're scrambling to try to figure out what to do. Like for example, if there was a girl doing outfit of the days and like doing story times or whatever, I'm sure, you know, she didn't start that with the intentions of like, being an influencer now. Nowadays, I think it's more likely, yes, but I think back in the day that wasn't really like, the goal. But yeah, that girl who's doing outfit of the days and doing story times, I she probably doesn't know how to run a business and that's okay. Me personally, I'm not super business savvy either because I have too big of a heart to just sell out and shell random products to you for the sake of getting a bag. I don't know if my mom heard me say that, she'd be like, what the hell, get to work. At the end of the day, I have morals, <laughs> okay? I mean, that's why I'm so picky about my sponsorships and why brands hate my guts. I mean, it's that and also because I say stuff like, if you hate kids, then you should probably be in the Challengers explosion. Yeah, it turns out they don't like it when you say stuff like that. Death threats, not advertiser friendly. Whatever, they're boring. Boring. I should be allowed to threaten people <laughs> and still make some money. Ah, y'all are so strict. I say all of this because some influencers grow a platform really quickly and they don't know what to do with all of that. This is more common with TikTok influencers because a good number of them are stuck strictly being like TikTok influencers because branching outside of TikTok can be difficult in so many ways. Oh my God, you don't even know the half of it. For one, some of them are only good at making short form content. So moving to places like YouTube, not doing YouTube shorts, but like long form stuff like this or Twitch live streaming, Okay, that's probably their Pearl Harbor. They don't know what they're doing over there. <laughs> After a minute of talking or trying to be entertaining, they are, they tap out, they're done. It's wraps for them. And even if a creator does manage to make like pretty good content on other platforms that are more long form, their TikTok following isn't gonna go out of their way to follow them or consistently watch their content. Trying to convert short form content viewers into long form viewers is like trying to turn an apple into an orange. It's practically impossible sometimes. <laughs> like it really doesn't help the short form viewers. They have the attention spans of like a walnut and their attention spans have probably been cooking in an air fryer for God knows how long. Like there's no hope for them. We can't save the youth. On the other hand though, trending content creators, like the really popular ones, uh, they don't have a problem with that. It's really just like the more mid-sized creators that are really having this issue. More popular creators that show up on your For You page every three to five videos. They have an audience that will happily watch them clip their toenails for 10 minutes and they won't get bored. It is 
fascinating. Tara Yummy. She's the first person that comes to mind when I think about like these really popular like TikTokers. I have been seeing her around for months and I can't escape her. I mean, not that I want to, she's gorgeous. She is a great example of like a TikToker being able to successfully expand to other platforms. I think she has like a million subscribers on YouTube and she has like, I think like over 2 million followers on Instagram, if I remember correctly. And it's not just Tara, Brittany Broski is like one of the like more earlier people that I can think of. Like, you know, she had that viral kombucha video and now look at her she is everywhere too charlie d'amelio is like one of the biggest tiktokers that has successfully pivoted into like bigger and grander things quinn blackwell i mean she's been around for like ever though so it's i don't know she counts but you know i guess technically she's from vine and i, I guess alex earl does she count i think she was on the cover of sports illustrated or something i don't know i don't really care point is is that there are like a lot of influencers who hire popular on TikTok but like they're also popular in other places. I don't think Quinn Blackwell is the best example but I think for everybody else though they got their start on TikTok and was able to pivot elsewhere. And I think the reason why it's been easier for them is because I think it's like it's if you're like a more personality based kind of influencer I think it's just easier for people to get invested in your content because you are the content. Wait, why did I sound like Maury for a second? You are the content. Not the phone. What? You need to <laughs> By the way, Hunter Hunter, if you're wondering whose tiny little fist that was, this is Gone. I think I got this from Hobby Lobby. Influencers like Wisdom K, for example, though, they're lucky to have an audience that wants to clock in because that man knows how to dress, all right? I think that when you're really good, at doing a particular thing, then people want to tune in because they want to see you do that really cool thing. And that's like, there's practically nobody else out there who's like remotely on their level. And so people will naturally gravitate towards you. That's really special circumstances because not everybody can be the best at everything. And I'm not saying that Wisdom K is the best at like styling and modeling or whatever. I'm not saying that he's the best, but like he's up there. He's the best in my heart. Man, that dude knows how to dress. My toxic trait is wanting to shop in his closet despite him being literally over six feet tall. I think he's like six five. I don't know. That man's tall. None of his clothes would fit me. Apps like TikTok make it easier to be successful online, but it's not easy to maintain it. And that's where some influencers fall flat. With TikTok, it's so damn easy to get followers on there. Like one viral video can get that ball rolling and then suddenly you're on Good Morning America. That's why advertisers and companies actually don't value TikTok followers that much. They don't convert to sales. People are just like mindlessly following TikTokers for some reason. TikTok relies heavily on the algorithm. In order for somebody to really be invested in your content, you have to keep appearing on their For You page. And if you're not constantly appearing on their For You page, they're gonna forget that they even follow you in the first place. TikTok followers, they just don't convert to sales or anything valuable to a company yet. For some reason, influencers will get a couple thousand followers and start acting like that one dude from Vine. My main goal is to blow up and then act like I don't know nobody. <laughs> the problem is that they will have a period of time where they do actually make some do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Did I do that right? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Eh, <laughs> still got it. The problem is, is that they will have a period of time where they do make some do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, and they will spend all of their money on Bugattis and golden showers or whatever they make, I don't, I don't know. What do rich people buy? What's wrong with a man giving away a golden shower? Sounds like a nice gift to me. <laughs> what? Shoot, I wish somebody gave me a golden shower. It's concerning to see influencers immediately splurge because there's no guarantee that that cash cow is gonna jump over that moon and something about a spoon. I think my heart is in my stomach and my stomach is in my butt and my butt ran away with the spoon. That makes sense because your butt is quite a dish. Oh, speaking of Bojack, hey you, I didn't see you back there. I'm mainly focusing on TikTokers right now because some TikTokers spoke about the state of the influencer space from their perspective, at least specifically on TikTok. Mind you, they're upset about how much money they made off of one TikTok video, which is more money than people make in a month while working a full-time job. Um, there's not as much money in social media as I think there was, like, my video that did 14 million views only paid me 
four thousand dollars. Which I know that everybody in this was you know, yeah. Video y'all may be are, like, "Wow, that's amazing!" That's but it was lot. over a minute long. That video took like an hour to do. It's just like well, here every. I and we only video. have that's like once in a blue moon something goes that viral. I am a glass half full type of person to a fault, so I am briefly ignoring the issue with that clip in order to address the concerns that they're mentioning. I think that the conversation about monetization on TikTok is interesting. Like I love talking about like content creator stuff. Like I, this is fun for me. This video is honestly really fun for me. It's like I just have an excuse to kind of just like give you guys like a glimpse into like the stuff that I think about on a daily basis. Monetization on TikTok is interesting and people, not just creators, but also non-creators should be more aware of this. Now, I'm not saying that this is like some really important, the issue that absolutely needs to be in the back of everybody's heads at all times. I'm not saying that, but I think that the lack of conversation is why there's so much confusion. I've been in the TikTok creator program since 2020 and things have drastically changed since then. The problem with this conversation is that creators don't talk about the logistics that go behind content creation. Luckily you have me to break it down for you. Oh shit. Professor World is in the house. The White House. Yeah, I thought you'd appreciate a change in scenery. Today we're going to be learning about the TikTok creator program. Ooh. Initially, the creator program was just a creator fund, meaning that TikTok got a whole bunch of money from somewhere, honestly. I don't know. Maybe a demon, the devil gave it to them. Regardless, they got a bunch of money and they were giving out the money, spreading the wealth like a potluck. I was fortunate enough to be eligible to participate in the creator fund and I managed to actually get a couple bands out of them. That was during the pandemic though. So now the creator fund has morphed into the creator program. The issue with the creator fund was that it was a fixed amount of money that TikTok was paying creators. That money would eventually run out. Like, I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but it was like, it was not a billion dollars. I'm, I don't know why that number popped into my head, but it was definitely like several million dollars. And so the new creator program was formed. The new creator program is funded by advertisers just like YouTube. How does TikTok calculate a creator's revenue? Each video that is eligible for monetization has an RPM, reward per mil. This is a fancy way of saying how much money will you earn for every thousand views you get on a video. If Sally's RPM is $5 and Sally earns 10,000 views on a video, then Sally made $50 off of that video. I know your brain started leaking out of your ears the second I started doing math, but hey, you'll be all right. Or maybe you won't be all right. I don't know, maybe you'll just croak. You'll just roll over and die. Do you, do you need me to call someone for you? Eh, it doesn't matter. Class is over. I think that the two people on that podcast started that conversation in the worst way possible. Like, what are you doing down there? That's crazy. Anyway, nobody is going to listen to them because they're sitting in their cushy chairs and complaining about making four grand off of a TikTok that took them a whole excruciating hour. Oh my God. One hour of editing? Bro, I wish making these videos took one hour to make. Oh my God. One whole hour. Honestly, I'm not even upset that they're being insensitive. I'm more pissed that they're bringing up a valid concern, but now that's being overlooked because of how tone deaf they sound. For those of you who aren't in the know, getting 14 million views on a video is not an easy thing to do, and $4,000 is a lot of money, but I'd imagine that they have expenses that are more than the average person's. Once again, it's a case of influencers falling victim to their success. Sure, at one point they were making a lot of money, but now that that well's drying up, their lifestyle is becoming harder and harder to maintain. We're a little low on money now that we bought the house. Um, like literally, we have to be smart with our money now. It's not, oh, I'm an influencer. I can spend as much money as I want. Look at me, look at me, look at me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's very be smart with your like i know the value of a dollar i think the issue with influencers talking about their financial issues is the lack of financial transparency in the content creator space non-creators you guys well, not all of you but the majority of you guys you don't know exactly how creators make their money and then how much of that money they're making you know so if someone complains about making 
$4,000 off of a video that got 14 million views, people don't have anything to compare that to. It's okay, $14,000, that is a lot. How much money would a 14 million view video get you in the past? right? It's like we have no frame of reference. They have nothing to compare it to. All people hear is somebody complaining that they're making rent money off of one video and they're treating it like pocket change. People are going to make assumptions about an influencer's bank account based off of what the creator is flaunting because that's really all the viewers have to work with. For example, I don't have much to flex, but I did get this signed 21 Pilots bookmark not too long ago. I had zero hesitation buying it. Like it just, I, the second I saw it was on sale, I was like, put that in the cart now. Take my money now. Guess how much money I'm making based off of me making this really interesting financial decision. I need to laminate this. There are so many factors when it comes to the amount of money someone is making as an influencer. You have to factor in merch, businesses that they're running, uh, you, you have to know whether or not they're actually monetized on certain platforms because okay there could be a youtuber out there with like 10 million subscribers but if their channel isn't monetized they're not making any money. Sponsorships is a biggie donations are they even donating to charity also their monthly expenses altogether and there's just there's so why does my boob itch please stop you're embarrassing me but there's so many things to consider when it comes to how much money an influencer is making so follow count and views is not the most reliable metric people assume that more followers equals more money which is not entirely wrong it's just not as simple anymore like maybe in the early days of the internet that would be true but definitely not anymore especially now that influencers are apparently competing with celebrities for brand deals now oh and i'm gonna give you some tea right now right now right now i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let y'all influencers know some tea right now right now right now that's going on the economy is bad the economy is bad if y'all notice and if y'all go to a lot of artists Fuck influencers. If you go to a lot of artists, a lot of artists are not getting brand deals right now. Brands are broke right now. Brands are broke. So y'all are competing with artists when it comes to getting money. This is covering my face. As a creator, that is scary. I know the majority of you don't care and have bigger issues to worry about, but it's scary dedicating all this time and effort into these videos only to be told that I'm basically dueling with Billie Eilish to get a sponsorship. That's, that's insane. You're telling me I am 1v1ing Miss Le Mort de Ma Vie. And you expect me to win that fight? Miss Bittersweet? Miss The Greatest? Miss Birds of a Feather? Miss My Boy? Miss Copycat? Miss Ocean Eyes? Listen, I watched the music video for Shahiro. I don't stand a chance, all right? I, she can tussle. Maybe I'm being a little delusional thinking that Billy and I are on the same level when it comes to sponsorships. I highly doubt the same companies that are trying to hit up Billy Eilish are trying to hit my line. Whatever, you get the point. I don't even want to talk about that Amazon forefront that wanted me to promote a towel that literally said come rag on it. I get a lot of interesting emails. TLDR, you, uh, you can't make as much money on TikTok as you used to. Short form content in general. It's not easy to monetize because advertisers can't promote themselves effectively through paid ads because the videos are so short, though they are trying because now ads play at the end of like longer TikToks. Like if a TikTok is like over a minute long, you may be bombarded with an ad after watching the video. Not to mention the ads that appear every three videos that appear on your for you page. We're in hell and we don't even get to have a Jeremy, our hellish form of entertainment. <laughs> Dude, if you do that again, I'm gonna punch you. I'm not kidding. All I'm saying is don't let appearances fool you online because that dude who bought an Aston Martin, he, he's probably renting that for his Hinge profile and definitely lives with six other people in like a two bedroom apartment. Hey, I'm not judging. I just wish that Joshua would stop pretending to be somebody that he's not. That's it for today's video. Oh my God. God, I had so much fun making this. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I have memberships on my channel, which means that I make extra videos for you. The last video I made for members only was literally me like doing a tier list of every single Bojack Horseman character. So if you like to watch that, you should join my memberships. Or don't, you don't have to, doesn't matter. Also, I'm doing this thing, okay? I'm starting this thing. I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna stick to this. I'm just throwing this out there, seeing if it sticks. I'm starting a book club, like a proper book club. There's this app called Fable on that app. You can join book clubs. And so I wanted to do a exclusive book club just for you and me. I need people to join it so that way we can actually like do it. Hold up if you want. The link will be in the description if you'd like to hang out with me again. I don't know if I'm gonna stick to that. It is an app. 
those you're gonna have to download a whole other app i know i annoying i'm sorry uh thank you so much for watching if you like the video like the video give or uh, i don't even know what i say at the end of my videos anymore i just make stuff up give it a like subscribe if you want i don't really care what you do do whatever you want other links to my social medias will be linked down in the description as well as operation olive branch which helps and supports people in palestine thank you so much for watching i will see you when i see you sorry christ not the mic abuse okay bye